Okay, can y'all see me? Can you see me? Yeah, this is 100% natural light. I am in the process of packing up because I'm moving on Friday and today's Wednesday, but I'm getting ready to go to an event in my neighborhood, one of the last events I will be attending. Let me just close the door. I want y'all to see all up in my closet. My bathroom door is open, that's okay. All my makeup's in here, but the lighting here is not good. And I already packed up. Oh, I didn't pack up my light. Dang it, I thought I packed up my light. I kind of like just being in this natural light right here, but the thing is all my makeup is behind me, so I'm gonna have to go back and forth. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna have to go back and forth to get it and get ready. So the party starts at five. Hello, Takesha. Um, party starts at five, it's 3.45, so I have plenty of time. Um, I wanna play with the new Urban Decay palette though. I'm kind of liking this whole natural light situation. So I'm just gonna go try and scoop up all the makeup and sit it right here on my bed. I actually have the, my laptop on top of a box. I'm sure you can hear that. It's on top of a box that's on top of my bed so that I can stand up and record this. So I'm gonna go grab all the makeup and put it on my bed and then we will get started. And my brushes, which happen to be next to my toothbrush and everything that's connected. <laughs> So this party, excuse me, Nolan, this party is outside at the pool and they're having free margaritas and a chip and salsa bar. So I need makeup that's going to last in the heat and humidity that is South Carolina. Um, it's been up in the 90s and the heat index has been up to 107 so far this summer. Like that's the highest heat index we've had is 107. And it's barely summer, so yeah, Nola's down here. You can't see her, but she says hi. She's being a good girl. Good girl. Okay, I've got most of the stuff I need for now. If I need to run back and get more, I will. Oh, I've got the mirror. And the highlighter. Oh, goodness. Oh. Okay, I think I'm actually ready. So, since I'm in the process of moving, I have packed up basically all of my makeup, and I only have set aside enough items to basically hold me over for the next few days. Like, I've just chosen one of everything or just, like, a few of each makeup item because I don't want to keep a lot of stuff out. Everything else is packed up and I'm not, I'm only using what I got. I have only one foundation now and, and such. So let's just go ahead and get ready with the skin prep. So I just got out of the shower and to hydrate, I'm gonna use the Murad Oil Control Mattifier with SPF 15 since I'm gonna be outside and I need, this is so strange because I don't have a mirror. I'm used to looking in the uh, bathroom mirror as I get ready. So I'm gonna use this. Since I need my makeup to last, because I'm also planning to go to church at seven after this little get together. <laughs> There's someone that just walked past me. <laughs> and so I need my makeup to last until church as well, through worship service, midweek worship service. So I'm just gonna rub this in all over my face. And I really like this because it hydrates the skin but also controls your oil. It is actually one of my favorite moisturizers because it's also mattifying, but it doesn't dry your skin out. It's really great as a primer for makeup as well if you just wanna use this alone, if you don't have super oily skin or if you're not gonna be sweating a bunch, but I have a feeling I'm gonna be sweating a lot, especially if they have the margaritas and the salsa bar outside. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna be sweating. And I wanna stay for at least an hour so it doesn't look like I literally just came, had like two, three margaritas, ate some chips and salsa, and then just like left. <laughs> Cause I could probably do that in like 15, 20 minutes, but I'm committed to staying for um, 
an hour. Do you think you will apply soon? Apply soon for what? Apply for what? Next, I'm going to go on with the Fenty Beauty Primer. All these people are walking past, so that's what my dog is barking at. And I'm watching them walk past you. I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Pro Filter Primer. I'm going to do two pumps of this. Do you think we'll apply after you get out in the sun? Apply what? Reapply my makeup? No, I'm not redoing my makeup. Oh, no. I, or apply a powder like touch up? Probably not. Usually with the makeup I'm about to use, if I go out in the sun, I don't have to touch it up or reapply. Like as soon as I go back into the AC, it just like dries matte again like I just did it because I know how to finesse being out in the sun and wearing full face of makeup. Like, because I mean, I lived in South Carolina the past, what, six, seven years. And I finally figured out what primers and what stuff works best for my skin so that I don't have to reapply. I don't have to worry about it running or anything. I can sweat and then the makeup stays. I'm also gonna go in with the Ulta Beauty Matte Face Primer. And I'm gonna focus this on the perimeters of my face first. You notice I'm layering lots of mattifying uh, products. And that's the key is like your skin prep is to make sure that the stuff underneath is mattifying. And the foundation I'm using is great for humidity. I believe it is hum humidity resistant. I know the Fenty primer is humidity resistant because you know, Rihanna being from Barbados, she knows all about humidity and high temperatures. So, okay, so I'm done priming. Well, I use two different primers. Yeah, Fenty Beauty and then the Ulta brand. I love these two primers together. They are great for oil control. And then this is like extra oil control using the Murad oil control mattifying moisturizer. So I'm good when it comes to the priming. So now we're gonna go on to foundation. For foundation, I'm gonna use the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion. Now they call it Becca Ultimate Coverage 24 hour foundation. I love this stuff and I have the shade Mahogany. This is the only foundation I'm keeping out while I move because I know that it's long wearing, it's 24 hour wear. Um, it doesn't dry your skin out. And my sister says that it looks like skin on me because the color match is so good. I have the shade Mahogany. And I'm only going to use two pumps. Let me take my earrings out while I do this. Doo -doo -doo. I'm only going to use two pumps. One pump on this half of my face. And one pump on this half. I'm going to go with a little bit more on this side because it kind of like didn't come out. All the way that's enough on that first pump this foundation is the truth I love it a lot we're gonna blend that out with the ColourPop F15 foundation brush and I really am excited to play with this new Urban Decay palette you will see the color match is Spot on. Looks really good. It's really easy to blend. And I like to focus most of it on my cheek area. And then I kind of take it onto my forehead, over my eyelid, under the eye. Yeah. The color match is really good. You can see that it's a little bit darker than my skin because on my hairline, you see where my skin is a little bit lighter. So it's going to make sure I blend into my hairline. Not doing any fancy baby hairs or anything like that. Ain't nobody got time for that right now because I've literally been packing all day. My sister was here yesterday and today. We went to brunch and then she left. And um, what was I going to say? Why am I talking about this? There was a reason I was talking about this. What was I talking about before this? I had something to tell you all about something. Oh, she went to brunch and then that was, I got home at like, 11.45 and then I've literally been packing since then until 3.15 was when I got in the shower and now it's 3.54. And honestly, if I'm in a rush, but I don't want to, I just don't want to be bare faced. Okay, I will stop right here with just foundation. I'll just wear a foundation and this is it. And I'll like lightly dust some loose powder over my face. But if I 
most of the time I don't care. It's either I wear no makeup or I have on basically a full face or, you know, eyebrows and at least my minimum, like when I'm in a rush to go to work, I, I put it all on my Snapchat on, I think that was Monday. My minimum is, is foundation powder to set it. Cause I have normal to oily skin, eyebrows, mascara and lip gloss and highlighter. I do love some highlighter. So as you can see, two pumps covered my whole face. If you have less acne scarring than I do, you can probably get away with one pump. But you notice I usually always pump on my cheek now because that's where I need most of the coverage. You can see it is a little bit darker than I am. That's okay. That's okay. Still looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and set this. I've been blending it enough, making sure I just blend it into the hairline so we don't have that weird space. And make sure I get under my eyes. Sometimes I forget to put foundation under my eyes because I don't have under eye bags. And I don't wear concealer because I don't, I don't really need it. So boom, foundation is on. For powder, I'm going to be using my Urban Decay All Nighter and my Cody Airspun. I'm going to go in with the Cody Airspun first. It's perfect. Are you nervous about the move? No, I'm not nervous about the move. I'm a military child. I, moving has been my whole life. It doesn't phase me. <laughs> I literally was born in Germany. Then uh, my parents met in high school in Georgia. My dad joined the army. My parents got married at 18 and 19 years old. They moved to Germany. That was his first duty station. Sorry, I'm knocking off the excess powder. They moved to Germany, had me. They moved back to Georgia. Then they went back to Germany, had my sister. Then we moved to Louisiana. Then we moved to Maryland. Then we moved to Hawaii. Then we moved to Kansas. Then we moved here to South Carolina. I graduated from high school, went to college. My parents got moved to Washington State all the way across the country, but they kept the house that they have here in South Carolina. And then they came back and then my mom was like, yo, look, Woodrow, that's my dad's name. Uh, I am tired of moving. I done been married to you for, I think it was 24 years at that point. And she was like, I'm gonna need you to uh, get out of the army or, or you're gonna be single, basically, kind of, sort of. In a nutshell, you know, summarizing. And my dad was like, oh, oh. okay, Pamela, that's my mother. I will get out of the army. So my dad retired after 26 years in the army. He retired. So yeah, I've moved a lot. I'm going with a little bit more powder because you know we want oil control. We want this foundation to be locked in place. And Cody Airspud is the most like oil controlling powder I have. It keeps me matte. It keeps my foundation from slipping, sliding, dripping, slipping. Yes, I have traveled a lot. Um, and then, you know, with all those places, I have family that lives all over the South in Alabama, in, do I have family in Mississippi? No, Alabama, in Florida, in Georgia. Um, we've driven the whole East Coast. Um, we drove from Washington State back to South Carolina. Okay, so I've literally driven cross country with my family in one vehicle. So I've been to almost all 50 states except for basically the Southwest United States. I haven't been to Arizona. Um, I haven't been to that area. Nevada, haven't been. Do we drive through part of Nevada? No, haven't been to Nevada. Like that whole area of our, our country, I haven't been to. All right, so I've used this Cody Airspun really to set the center of my face when anywhere where I might be prone to creasing. And you can kind of tell those areas are highlighted which is what i want with this powder i use the shade suntan it's the darkest shade they have just so that it blends into my skin a little bit better i also really like translucent extra coverage i just love cody airspun it's great stuff for the rest of my face i'm going to go in with the urban decay all-nighter waterproof setting powder this is a pool party i don't think i'm gonna get in the pool though because i'm just not feeling it because then i gotta take another shower and you know <laughs> i pay all my own bills and i just don't feel like using that much water today 
So even though I'm going to have to take another shower anyway, because I'm probably going to be really sweaty, but I just don't want to, you know, have to get my hair wet and just, no, I'm not getting in the pool. So I'm using the same flat top brush. This is um, a BH Cosmetics flat top brush. And I'm just, I've hit paint on this one. I ordered a new one. It should be here tomorrow. Um, and I'm just going to take this and press this into the skin everywhere I haven't set yet and over top of where I've already set. What's my favorite place I've traveled to? Sorry, I'm like moving around the computer. I have the mirror blocking <laughs> where um, I can read where you've typed. Um, my favorite place I've traveled to... Um, um uh, okay so a lot of people think that you know hawaii would be the best but living there and visiting there is two different things i think everyone should visit but i would never personally live there again um because the cost of living is so high and there's so much homelessness and i've talked about this before in other videos so i just wasn't really feeling that and a lot of those homeless people are veterans and it's just like you don't like we don't know their lives. We don't know how they got in that position or that situation, but it just didn't sit well with me. Also, it's like you're really isolated. When you look at the globe and the map of where Hawaii is, it's literally in the middle of the ocean. And I don't like the feeling of being so isolated from everyone else in the world, which I think is why it's a great place to get away and visit because it, it almost is like its own little country, even though it is a part of the United States. But the culture there, I love. The food there, I love. The people, my friends, most of my friends I've made in life are actually still there. Live, They still live in Hawaii. They are from Hawaii. They grew up in Hawaii. They were born and raised in Hawaii. And um, I consider myself to really truly be an island girl because that's where I had my most developmental years. And what really shaped kind of how I view the world is living there from ages 10 to 14. A lot of stuff happened to me. I went through a lot during that time. Um, that was um, Operation Iraqi Freedom. My dad was literally deployed almost the entire time we lived in Hawaii. And um, it really kind of shaped who I am as a person. I just see how much they value family, how much, um, how tight the families are over there, just how important like family is to them. And that really made me appreciate my family, even though we're not always together in the same state or country and um i just love that about hawaii plus the food the food <laughs> the food is bomb but i would never live there again because um it's just so expensive and the schools are not the best and me being a teacher and they don't really have like the best band programs and music programs which is what i teach so it doesn't really appeal to me on a professional sense um and the homelessness really is what really just got me like ugh. And then there aren't too many black people there either, which, you know, it doesn't really bother me because I've, I've grown up being the one black friend, the one black girl in the class. That's been my whole life until I literally moved to South Carolina. I had never seen so many black people in my life until I moved to South Carolina. So, you know, there's that. OK, so my face is super matte now. I'm sure you can see. Look at it. My skin looks flawless. Look, this is natural light. <laughs> my skin looks flawless. <laughs> Looks good. Looks smooth. Ooh, like a chocolate brownie. Okay. So I don't need any more powder. So we can move on to highlighting. Um, for highlighting, I decided to use a powder. It's a great place to visit. I suggest everyone visit Hawaii. If you can visit all of the islands or at least two of the islands, go to Oahu, which is the island that Honolulu is on and Pearl Harbor to place. That's um, the main island most people live on. And also visit the big island because you get the big island is kind of split into a green side and more of a volcanoish side. Hilo is the green side. Kona is the volcanoish side, more dry, just different, different like landscape. Like they look different, and they have um, chocolate factories there. There's lots of nature. If you like hiking, um, you can go on volcano uh, tours. I wouldn't suggest that right now since they're supposedly erupting over there. So, but yeah, it's a cool place to visit. Great place to visit. Take, you know, I say you need to, to truly experience Hawaii, you need 10, 10 or more days. I say, say, stay 10 to 14 days is a good time to go. Yeah, the Hawaiian Chocolate Factory, um, and you learn all about the um, different nuts that they have and and go to the Polynesian Culture Center, learn all about the culture of all the island people there in Polynesia, your Tahitians, your Fijians, your Tongans, your Samoans. Um, there's just so it's such a cool, interesting place. Like I love the culture there. 
I love all the, the different variety there. It's very diverse. That's one thing I do love about Hawaii is how diverse it is. Like I have friends from countries I can't pronounce and and I met their mothers who are usually first generation or, or um, first generation or immigrants and their children are first generation Americans to this country. And it was just very interesting to interact with them because most of them have never had a black person come to their home. And it was just, it was just a really cool experience. And I think everyone should visit. But um, one of my favorite places I visited is um, Portland, Oregon. So while my parents were stationed in uh, Washington state, I got a chance to visit. We took a day trip to Portland and then my best friend from high school moved to Portland. Did I tell you what I'm about to use? This is the pure sculptor highlight and contour palette. And I got this in my um, boxy charm. This is what it looks like. And I was skeptical that this wouldn't work on my skin, but it absolutely does all four shades. So I'm gonna mix together the two highlighters. The bottom one is called Trailblazer, which is a little bit darker. And the top one is called Originator. And I'm just gonna mix both of those and use that as my highlighter for the next few days until I decide to unpack everything. And I'm using a highlighter brush I also got in my BoxyCharm from Luxie, it's their tapered highlighter. How was the chocolate there versus American chocolate? Um, um, it's amazing. I think it's better personally. Um, but yeah, it's great. The food there is great. Um, and the culture, like I said, is fascinating. Like it's just so neat to be around so many diverse people. I love that. I love diversity. You hear me talk about that a lot about diversity, diversity, diversity. But I'm just so used to not being the majority. I like places where no one is the majority. You know what I'm saying? I like a true melting pot. And Hawaii is that for sure. For Pacific Islanders and Asians, for sure. Well. I'm glad you like them. I love them. I mean, I have both. Wait, do I have a not on a Becca highlighter? Yeah, so is New York, but New York is like dangerous and stuff, bro. I ain't about that life. I'm not about that big city life. Uh uh, not for me. Taking the subway and the train and people getting shot and stabbed, which can happen anywhere, of course, but like, and people following you and the homeless people in New York, not for me. My dad is from Jamaica, Queens, New York. So, um, yeah, it's not for me. Yo, it's just not for me. It's not, I can't, I can, ooh, I don't even want to really visit New York, honestly. Again, it's just, it's too much. I don't know how people do it there. I really don't understand how single women live in New York. Like, bruh, and it's so expensive. I'm sure New York is more expensive than Hawaii. Like I just, New York, think about New York gives me anxiety. So let's talk about Portland. <sighs> Back to Portland. So Portland, Oregon, as I was saying, <laughs> My high school best friend, who is Korean American, her name is Hannah. Her birthday was yesterday. She just turned 25. Happy birthday, Hannah. You'll probably never see this because you don't wear makeup like that, but it's all good. She lives in Portland, Oregon, which is literally one of the whitest cities on earth. Like, bro, I don't think I saw a, another black person there the entire time I visited. I stayed for 10 days or was it 14 days? I was there for a while. Um, and this was in December 2016, right before I moved to where I'm at now. And I, man, Oregon is just a beautiful state. It's the Pacific Northwest is just so pretty. Like I loved Washington, Washington State and Seattle. And in Washington State where my parents were, they were in the SeaTac area, like Seattle, Tacoma area. It's very diverse there as well. You have a lot of people from Hawaii and you have people coming down from Canada. And Canada is pretty diverse because um, there's lots of Asians there. And there's um, the French, like parts of Canada speak French and other parts speak English. So it's very diverse in Canada. So you got people coming from Canada and you have a lot of people from the Caribbean that move up to Canada and then they come down and sometimes live in Seattle or in Washington state. And I don't know, I just really like that area. And when I was there, it didn't really rain. You know, everybody complains about the Pacific Northwest like being cloudy all the time and like not getting sunshine. But while I was there, the sun shined. Um, so I enjoyed it. I mean, and it's not too hot there either. And it snows like a little bit, but not too much. I just really liked it there. Um, there's just a lot to do. It's very interesting. It's just really, it's really pretty. Like I enjoy the nature. Um, and it's very progressive, which is something I like. You know, Portland, Washington State, those are pretty um, democratic, more liberal states. 
So like people are not phased by things like people in the South will look twice at you for, you know what I'm saying? So I enjoyed that like sense of like, no one's really checking for me. Like I can just exist and wear what I want and be who I want and everyone else can do the same, you know, whether, you know, no matter what your preferences are, your sexuality or your lifestyle, you know, like you can just be you there because no one cares because they're so accepting and open-minded. And that's one thing I really enjoyed about while I was visiting there. Yo, I have a lot of highlighter, but that's okay. I like highlighter. Yeah, this is a lot of highlighter, but it's okay. So yeah, let's move on to the brows. My computer is going to die soon. I have 18%. I probably should plug it in, which means I'm going to have to. Nope, I think I can make it work here, but I'm going to worry about that a little bit later. For my brows, I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild Retractable Eyeliner Pencil. I chose this one over the other pencil I've been using because I don't have to sharpen it. And I'm traveling. I don't want to have to worry about that. Yeah, I'm going to plug it in eventually. But um, I don't know. I really... Oh, girl, I need to get closer to this mirror. I really like that area of our country. Also, like, there's, like, a lot of, I saw people wearing, like, hijab. Like, what I mean by, like, you can just be yourself. Like, nobody was phased by the Muslims. Nobody was phased if there was, like, people that identify as trans there. Nobody cared. I love that. Like, if a man wants to wear a dress and a skirt and some heels, no one cares there. Plus, it's not my business. So I feel like, you know, like, in the South, people, you know, you can get shot. I've had friends that have been threatened, that have been turned away from hotels because of their sexuality and how they identify. And that's horrible. And, and this happened in South Carolina, North Carolina specifically, are the two states I'm speaking on from their personal experiences. And I hate that. And if they go to Portland, they'll be welcomed with open arms. And I love that about Portland in the Northwest. So go visit. And the nature is just breathtaking. Like driving through is so pretty. Like there's waterfalls, there's like legit rainforest. They have beaches, they have mountains. Like it's just, it's just beautiful. It is still a little expensive over there, but it's not as bad as California and it's not as bad as Hawaii and it's not as bad as New York. But it's still a little bit expensive. I don't know about the schools over there. Like, I don't think I would ever see myself moving out there though, because there is, well, at least where I was in Portland specifically, there weren't a lot of people of African descent that I saw. And I don't know where they're at. I know they live there, but I just don't know where they go. They weren't where I was at. <laughs> so. I mean, where else have I really liked? Um, I actually really enjoyed Kansas as well, living in Kansas. Um, I lived in one of the more diverse places in Kansas. But the thing about Kansas, there's not too much to do, though. And I'm kind of like a homebody. Like, I'm cool just staying at home watching a movie, making a frozen pizza. That's fun to me, you know? So that's probably why I didn't mind Kansas too much. I also met some really cool people in Kansas. Because I live near the military base, I lived in Junction City. It was more diverse than other parts of Kansas because, I mean, it's Kansas, come on, Midwest. Like, <laughs> that's like, you know, white people central. No offense, I love white people, but, you know, and then, like, in your cities like Wichita or Kansas City, you know, that's where the black people are because you know, there's more jobs and stuff in the cities. But, you know, in the other parts of Kansas, there's more cows than there are people in Kansas. So, but where I lived, it was really diverse. And we had literally everybody. We had Hispanics. We had Asians. We had a few Pacific Islanders. We had black people. We had white people. So, And we had people that were also like native as in native American because the Midwest, there's a lot of um, native American reservations. Where I'm moving to, there's actually a really big one, a big reservation nearby. 
that I've always wanted to visit and learn more about their culture because I think it's absolutely fascinating. And I don't see why we don't teach their history in schools, but that's a whole nother tangent. Don't let me get started on that. So yeah, Kansas, uh, probably not a good place to vacation, but if you stop through, you know, could be cool. Uh, I really like Texas. I visited Texas several times. That's a place I would actually consider living. I have an aunt that lives there. My dad also lived there while we lived in Kansas to go to the Sergeant Major Academy. He lived there for like nine months. So I didn't think I would like New York. I thought I would hate it. Loved it. Came back to the Detroit area and I was drawing my thoughts. <laughs> I like to be around Native Americans. Yeah. Yeah, that's some place I don't think I could ever live. Detroit. When I think about Detroit, I just think snow that's like the first my first thought is just snow michigan snow cold no it's too cold for me and i like the fall but i do not like northern winter because i lived in maryland and i lived in kansas and kansas gets a bunch of snow too like feet of snow not like more than two feet but that's still enough, you know, and pipes were bursting. That's the only time we got out of school. Like I went to school in negative degree weather. I went to school when there was a chance of um, frostbite. Like you would watch the news. My mom would always have the news on the weather channel on in the morning. And they'd be like, if you're outside, if you're exposed to these temperatures for more than five to 10 minutes, you have a chance of frostbite. We still went to school and I still waited outside at the bus stop. Okay. So I'm not really about that life when it comes to weather and snow. But I don't mind a little bit of snow. Like here in South Carolina, it snows. Where I'm moving to, it snows. But no more than like six inches, six, maybe eight if it's, you know, a really cold, rough winter. Yeah, the snow can be depressing. You literally can't go anywhere. Like you ain't gonna try and lose your life trying to drive on ice. Like it's not worth it. It's not that serious. So yeah, that's why I can never go to Detroit. Same thing for like New York. New York gets a lot of snow too. My grandma is actually from New York. She lived there until this year. She just moved down to South Carolina. So that took me a long time to do my brows, but uh, I feel like it's just because I was talking. I need to get my charger. I'll be right back and we'll get to this palette, which is probably why most of you are even watching. I'm excited to play with this palette. So be right back. Thank you. Okay, see I can reach the wall plug if I unplug my phone. Ooh. Yep, it's charging. Cool. I don't have to move. Let me check my brows. Make sure I approve of them. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think where else have I visited? I really like Texas. I think it's a great state to visit. It's so big. Oh yeah, like I was saying, my dad moved to Texas for eight or nine months while he was in the Sergeant Majors Academy, but we didn't want to move the whole family for a year, you know, just to go to Texas for a year and then be, you know, have to go somewhere else after. So we just stayed in Kansas and he lived in El Paso, which is right on the border. And um, you know, El Paso, I wouldn't suggest living there, really visiting there. There's not too much there. It's literally a border town. But, um, like, I've been to San Antonio. I've been to Dallas. I've been to Austin. And those places are really cool. And I'm super interested in living in, like, the Dallas-Fort Worth area or even Austin, Texas, that area. But I don't really, like, wasn't a huge fan of Houston. So Texas is another cool place. There's so much to do. Like, it's literally like its own country. It's so big. So... That's a cool place to visit. Um, living in Europe, I was so young, so I don't remember much um, from Germany. But it's Frau Heimbisch in Deutsch. I went to German school for a little bit. Um, and we visited other, I'm sure they visited other countries, but I don't remember it. Like, I legit don't, don't remember too much from Europe. I remember cobblestone streets and fountains, and that's pretty much it from living in Europe and like markets and like bread and pretzels and cookies, like getting it in the market in the street. And German marks. I remember German marks, the little coins. 
that's all. Let's jump into this palette. Um, I don't even know what kind of look I want to do. So I think I'm just going to, I literally just have on a blue spaghetti strap tank top and some like athletic shorts that are half black. They're black on the front and like gray on the back, like nothing special. Looks like I'm about to go for a run. So let me show you the colors. This is really pretty. This palette retails for $49. This is natural light. Yes, I would go back to Germany to visit. I would love to go back to Europe and visit. Um, so I think it's beautiful. So hopefully one of these days. I love the colors in here. There's a good variety of neutrals, cool tones, warm tones, jewel tones. This is my kind of palette because it has those pops of color and it has neutrals. So I'm feeling kind of colorful <laughs> in a colorful vibe. But I don't know. I'm kind of feeling lazy too, so I don't want to. I don't know if I want to like do the most. So we're probably gonna end up doing something really, really, really simple. So I'm gonna take the color Nola June. Can you stop? Thank you. Be careful. <laughs> I love makeup. Like I spend most of my money on food and makeup. I'm gonna take this color smog right here. Can y'all see it? Right there, it's a shimmer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just throw that on my lid with my finger. This palette is kind of heavy, it's very sturdy. If you watched any videos about it, it is very sturdy. I'm just gonna place that onto the lid with my finger. It's really uh, buttery. Yeah, this is a really pretty color. I feel like this is a shade they have already, smog. It sounds familiar. And I like this shade because it is somewhat close to my skin tone. So if you were in a rush, you could literally just put this like all over your lid and blend out the edges and go. But I'm not gonna be that, you know, simple with my lip today. I'm just gonna put this all over with my finger first. Yeah, what else do you want to know about my upbringing? My upbringing, where I've lived, the places I've visited, my experiences as a army brat, even though I'm not really a brat. I've never really liked that terminology, but it's whatever. Dark blue, the bottom shade, dark blue. Yes, there's a shade that's dark blue. It's called Radio. I'm actually going to use that for this look because I am feeling somewhat colorful, but also lazy. You can always tell when I'm going to do like a super lazy look. When I start with the lid shade. <laughs> okay. So I have this all over my lid now. It's pretty. You can honestly stop here. Do you apply makeup every day? Um, eh, if... I don't have anywhere to go. I normally don't wear makeup unless I just feel like recording a look and taking pictures and being creative. Um, I do wear makeup to work every day. If I'm teaching people's children, I'm gonna wear makeup because I look like a child without it. I literally get mistaken. With the full face of makeup on, I still get mistaken for being 17. That's the age most people guess that I am, 17. And I'm 25 and I'm an educator and I need people's, because most of the parents of my children should be, should be, should be, older than I am, I need them to see me and respect me as an adult, which can be hard for a lot of people when they find out how old I really am. And when I look, when I look this young, it can be an issue with some parents. So yes, I wear makeup every day. If I'm going to work, I wear makeup. And I wear at Ulta, so I had to wear makeup. Well, you don't have to, but you should. If you work at a makeup store, you should wear makeup. But yeah, for the most part, I do wear makeup every day. If I don't have anywhere to go, then I don't. If I'm being lazy, I don't. I'm going to go into that blue shade radio. Let me show it to you. The blue shade radio. This one, the darker blue right here. I'm going to put that in the outer V. <laughs> yeah. See, Jay, you understand. Yeah, I get the same thing, bro. I'm five foot nine. I'm like, really, y'all? Ooh, this is. 
This is really pretty and it's pigmented. And I just really enjoy the process of doing makeup. I'm just focusing this on the outer third of my eye. I mean, y'all can see, y'all can see. Um, I just enjoy doing makeup too. So I don't do it because like, I feel like I have to. I do it because I want to and I enjoy it. I really do enjoy the process. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't spend the majority of my money on it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But like, people try and come for me like, why do you always wear makeup? Or do you feel like you have to wear makeup? Like, you don't have to wear all that makeup. I know I don't have to wear all that makeup. And secondly, I didn't ask for your opinion, people. And they're like, why don't we ever see you without makeup? I'm like, if you follow me on my social media, I have pictures on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my Snapchat of me without makeup. I've literally taken my wig off in public. Like, I don't care, like, what people think I look like without it. That's why I start all my videos without it. So it's like when people try and come to me about that, I'm like, What are you trying to say here? What is you trying to say? Because I hear you, but you don't make sense. So most of the time I think those people are just jealous because my application skills are so, are so good and they can't apply their makeup as flawlessly as I can. And I would help them if they just asked me for help instead of attacking me for the fact that I wear it. So there's that. But yeah, I'm so excited to move. I'm really excited. And this is the only palette I took out because I want to keep playing with it um, for the next few days. Because I don't plan to start like unpacking until I don't know how long my parents want to stay. They're probably going to force me to like unpack most of my stuff while they're there. Or they could do like how when I moved here, literally they moved me up here. And then they like, literally we brought everything in the house and they were like, bye, have fun unpacking. And I was like, okay. So yeah, this blue is really pretty. So now I'm going to use this brush and what shade do I want to add to this look? I'm going to dip into that dark blue just a little bit. Radio is what it's called. And I'm going to use this to blend the edges of this look. It's just really pretty. Like, I like the way this looks coming out. Speaking of, like, makeup releases and stuff, Fenty is dropping a new palette. And I've looked at it. Like, I've looked at the pictures and stuff and the promotion videos and things. I think I'm going to get it. Just depends on how much it is. I didn't look at the price. Because if it's as expensive as that other one, I feel like her palettes are going to be a little overpriced. I don't know. I try not to spend more than $50 on one individual makeup item because I feel like that's a little, that's a, a lot. That, you know, that is a lot. That's a little much for me. So, yeah. I'm going to go in with this brush in the smog shade because I feel like I've put a little bit too much blue and I'm just going to add more of this smog shade back to the lid. But yeah, I need to research how much that palette is going to be. And then from there, I'll decide if I feel like it's worth the money. Because I feel like I already have those shades in other palettes. Like, it looks like basically a warm neutral palette with a pop of blue. It almost reminds me of this palette in some ways, honestly. Um, yeah, this color is a gold color. This palette is $49. Which, if you think about it, if you own any of the Urban Decay Naked palettes, which I don't because I don't really like them, the Naked palettes only have like 12 or 14 shades, and they are $54, whereas this Urban Decay palette has 21 shades, and it's $49. So it's cheaper than the Naked palettes, which I never got into. I just never really liked them, so... Okay. So I've only used two eyeshadow shades so far. And I'm just 
blending the edges and blending them together. Now I'm going to take I'm going to take Smog, which is the same shade I've been using. It's like a bronzy gold color. Like it's not a bright gold. It's more toned down, which I like. I'm going to put that on the lower lash line and in my inner corner. So far, these apply really easy. There's not even like fallout in the pan. And I dug my finger in there and I've used a brush. So, so far so good with this palette. And then we're just gonna put the shade Radio, which is the blue, on the outer half. I'm just gonna use the same brush. I'm not even gonna wipe it off. Or on this outer, just like third, really. And honestly, I'm gonna use this brush to kind of intensify it in the outer V area. Yeah, I'm super excited to move because I'm gonna be closer to my college best friend. So really excited. So that's it for eyeshadow. Really simple, really easy. Literally just use two shades to create this look. I'll be doing more looks. I said I'm going to give you all at least two more looks. So this is look number one. And then um, tomorrow I'll do something a little more extravagant and use at least four shades tomorrow. To I'm keeping it simple. So now I'm just going to add mascara. And I finally like my um, Essence Lash Princess like dried out. So now I've opened up my Benefit Bad Girl Bang Mascara. Still trying to decide how I feel about it. Um, I don't know what happened to everything y'all just said. It's so much fun to play with makeup. I feel like me creative with it. There's been lots of money makeup. You make me about those BH. I love BH Cosmetics brushes. Yes, and I agree that it is really fun. And that you can get creative. Play with color. Play with shape. Like that's really all makeup is. Yeah, I don't pay for high-end brushes. I don't, the Essence Mascara is really good. This was a part of this um, Bad Girl Bang from um, Benefit was a part of my gratis working at Ulta, so I got it for free. I would never pay $24 for a singular mascara. No, 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 not anymore. Not when I found my Essence Mascara that works amazingly. I mean, this one is good, but I feel like my Essence literally does the same thing, you know? like. Yeah. Trying to debate. Do I want to get in the pool? No, nah, I don't want to get in the pool. I wouldn't mind like being in my bathing suit, like getting some pictures next to the pool, but I don't know anybody here. So who's going to take my pictures? And I thought like that's super awkward <laughs> unless you're like with a friend. Like if you're with your friend and you're asking someone else to take a picture of you and your friend, that's okay. But if it's like, can you take some pictures of me by the pool for my Instagram? That's a little strange. Like, I know, like, especially if there's, like, some younger girls that were there, younger women that were there, they would get it. But, like, I have a feeling it's going to be me and all of the old people in my neighborhood. This neighborhood is, it's kind of split, like, 10% college students slash people in their 20s that usually have roommates, which I don't. And then maybe 30% families that have a child or two or more children. And then everybody else is like retired people. Or like married couples. So I don't really fall into any of those categories. 
which is why I probably haven't met anyone in this neighborhood really. Like it's been really hard to meet people my age that aren't married, that don't have children, you know, except for working at Ulta, but we just now started to get really close when I'm leaving, which usually happens to me, which is funny because now I just have a reason to visit. That's what I told them. I have a reason to come back and visit y'all so we can hang out and reconnect. So now I'm just building this mascara up some. It's funny how that like comes together, you know, like as soon as I'm leaving is when things are starting to like fall into place and come together. But, you know, it's it's not worth staying for. Not with my work situation. So I'm going to be a lot happier where I'm headed. And my apartment is a lot nicer and a lot less expensive. So there's that, too. I have granite. I was about to say marble, but it's not marble. I have granite countertops where I'm going. I have an island in my little kitchen. It's actually really cute. It's just nicer. Like the layout is just, it's nicer. It's better for me and my dog. Like it's just, it's just going to be better for us. I'm going to be on the first floor again. So that's good. The location is also great. I'm three miles from the South Carolina border. I mean, South Carolina, three miles from the North Carolina border, which means as soon as I cross the border, I'm in Charlotte. I'm in the city of Charlotte. So it's a great location. Lake Wiley is like less than 10 minutes away. The new school I'm teaching at is 15 minutes away. The other, the high school I work for is 15 minutes away. The church is like an eight minute drive away that I'll probably go to. It's just such a good location. Waffle House is less than two minutes away. Y'all know I love Waffle House. So it's just better. And then my best friend, my college best friend is going to be a 30 minute drive away. So not far at all. Um, the college I went to is 30 minutes away from there too. So I still have a few friends that I got close to that were younger than me that are still in university that can come visit me now. And there are music people. So if they want to come volunteer in my classroom, they can easily pop over to my school and help out. So I'm just going to have a lot more resources that I can utilize in that area. I just have more connections there in that area, that general region. So I'm, I'm really excited. I'm slowly building up this mascara because um, you don't want to put too much because it's powerful. Like it's a really good mascara, but I just don't believe in paying this much for it. Especially on the lower lashes, you got to be careful or else you're going to end up <laughs> with really, really, really clumpy, thick lower lashes, like in a strange looking way. And I don't want that. This mascara is humidity resistant, I believe, or it's water resistant. So if I do start to sweat, it shouldn't like run or anything. All right. Last but not least are the lips, a lip color. I mean, this look is fairly neutral. I mean, we have a little bit of pop of color with the blue, but it's not like in your face. So I really like the way this look has turned out. I didn't keep out very many lipsticks and I packed away all my other lip colors. Like they are packed away. I can't access them. So I kept out one of my favorite, where's my lip gloss? <laughs> Did I check out a lip gloss? I took out one of my favorite Maybelline lipsticks, which is called Crazy for Coffee. I love this lipstick. I'm going to put that on. This is a nude family, in my opinion, for darker skin. Like It's not super bright. I love Crazy for Coffee, though. This is one of my go-to lipsticks for job interviews. I want to put a gloss on top. I think I have a gloss somewhere. I think I have it in my purse, which is in the living room. I'm going to go in the living room, so I'm going to put this Neutrogena gloss on top. Ugh. But it has a color to it. This is the Neutro. Neutro. Ne what did I just say? Neutro. Neutrogena Hydro Boost, Boost Hydrating Lip Shine. I can't speak. With hyaluronic acid and 
It's in the shade Soft Mulberry. I'm just going to put this on top. What beauty delivery service do I subscribe to? I subscribe to BoxyCharm, which I was going to say, I can show you a box for my BoxyCharm, but I threw all of them away because I'm moving. Um, I love BoxyCharm. I get, I've get i gotten some great things in there. And the stuff that I don't, well, I wouldn't use, I just give to my sister. So, yeah, I gave her a whole bunch of makeup while she was here. But I really like BoxyCharm a lot. Okay. Okay, so this is the final look. Oh, I also do, um, uh, what's it called? I do a uh, curl kit as well, since I have natural hair. And I love curl kit. Like, it literally keeps me from having to buy natural hair products because almost everything they send me has worked for my hair. And the few items that haven't, I just give them to my sister. Or there was a girl that came over yesterday, um, the high school band director, his goddaughter, she's 18. She's mixed, she has natural hair, but she doesn't really do anything with it. She's more of a tomboy. And so she came over and I gave her like a whole big thing of um, hair products that some of them are lightly used and some of them I haven't even used yet that are unopened and just stuff that doesn't work on my hair that could work for her. I told her literally it's trial and error with natural hair. But once you find what you do love, I just told her just stick to it and don't change it until it stops working for you. And then you have to trial and error again to find something else that works. So I literally gave her like it was heavy. It was a heavy bag, probably about 10 10 products in there, full size, and I think about six of them were unused. So I'm happy she got to, you know, she has some stuff to get her started because it is expensive. And when you're 18, you don't got money like that. So I literally, I usually save up the stuff that doesn't work for me and give it to other people. But yeah, so I just do curl kit and um, boxy charm, and I love both, and I will do both. Um, another one that I recently started doing is called Take Care Of, and that's a vitamin service. I can show you all that one if you want to see it. I can grab it real quick. Let me get it so you know. Oh, no. Did I pack it up? I did pack it up. I thought I had it out. Never mind. I packed it up. I thought I had it out still, but um, I learned about it from the podcast I listened to. I think on it was either Getting Grown or The Friend Zone. It was Getting Grown because Dr. Takia uses Take Care Of. But it's like a vitamin subscription service, like vitamin and supplements. And you take a quiz and you put in like your health concerns. And that's also beauty related because that works from the inside out. Um, so like, yeah, I have like some probiotic vitamins that I take and some for energy, even though I'm a pretty high energy person. But during the school year, though, like after a while, like, mm. well, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be different where I'm going because it's not going to be as stressful. But like I was so drained after school some days where I was for 12 hours. And that's not healthy to literally be awake 12 hours and sleep 12 hours every day. Like that's good. Like literally no it was bad. So those are the three that I do and that I probably will continue to do for a really long time. So yeah. Thanks for hanging out and watching this video. Um, this is the look, this is natural light. So yeah, you can see the foundation hasn't started to get oily or anything like that. Color match is really good. Um, it's really long lasting. It's good for the heat, humidity. It doesn't go anywhere. So it's 4:43. So I'm going to, Make my slow, oh, what is Curl Kit? Curl Kit is a monthly, do I have one behind me? I don't. Curl Kit is a monthly subscription box geared towards women with natural hair. And I'll say women that are of African descent or have African ancestry. That's a better way to put it because there's lots of Hispanic and Latino women that have African ancestry. Um. What, what am I talking about? Monthly subscription box of hair products. You get four to five full size hair products. It's $20 a month. Um, I do have a link, but I'm not going to give you all my link because I'm not that kind of person. Um, and the shipping is $5. So it's really $25 a month. You get four to five full size products. You also get a little miniature magazine that comes with it. The mini magazine um, tells you about all of the products, 
why the why they have the ingredients they have what is it supposed to do for you why it's good for you why it's not or you know it just tells you about the products um, and the, or that product line and it also has like some tips about natural hair some people to follow on social media um, and it's I believe it is a black owned business um, yes it is a black owned business because she sends us newsletters the lady that owns it and she has three sons I believe yeah yeah it's a good it's a good thing because I don't have to and you get it once a month I don't have to go buy hair products anymore because I already have so many and then I get four to full four to five full size ones every month and it's usually sometimes like four staple products four or five products from a whole line so you might get the shampoo the conditioner the leave-in and the gel or the shampoo conditioner a uh, cream curl definer and the gel or an edge control a conditioner a cream hydrator and uh uh i'm trying to think, a mousse or something um I, like I said, it's geared towards people that have African ancestry. Curly hair in general. So that could be all the curly hair. It's it's geared towards keeping your hair healthy. I'm not going to say it's geared towards people that have 4C hair because that would be excluding a lot of other different kinds of curls. So... Cause I don't have 4C hair. So, but the product, some of the products work for me, very few haven't. So yeah, I would just look into it. You can research it. You can go to their website, um, curl kit. It should pop up curl kit. You type in curl kit monthly subscription box. You can read about it and you can look at the past, um, curl kits they've had. Um, if you want to reference somebody that has worked for them, Ambrosia Malboro, I think it's how you say her name, name, Brosia. If you look her up on Instagram, Ooh, technology I can show you she um, makes videos for them she's gonna stop after this next one because she's been doing it for years but she has natural hair she has more like 4b 4a hair which is kind of what I'm in and you can see all the curl kits on her page yes follow her you can see all the curl kits she literally popped up as soon as I started typing but she works with curl kits find a good picture of her she's really pretty that's her i love her she's so pretty look at her she's gorgeous so yep she does a video every month about them and um she'll tell you about the products and stuff and more about the company because she gets paid to do that but yeah i'm gonna take this slow walk over to the pool so i can go get some chips and salsa and some free margaritas Hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was cool hanging out with y'all. Have a wonderful Wednesday. And I'll see you tomorrow for another exciting look. A more exciting look than this. Because this is pretty simple. But it's still pretty, you know.